I saw on uh, the Squared Circle Reddit, there was there was somebody who was like, this is why we think the WWE is stale. And it was this guy, Lars something. Lars and he Sol did, Sullivan. He, he did the same power bomb in the same direction with the same camera angle and the same get up celebration like five times in a row or something. Yep. I was yeah. like, that's really bad. They're presenting their product, not developing the characters, but developing the brand. Imagine if FromSoft developed themselves as a, a company that just like making hard games instead of making, uh -huh. um, you know, the characters of the games itself. Hmm. Which brings us to our first thing, call and help segue. <laughs> I felt like I was on this. <laughs> Welcome to the review of Sekiro, Shadows Died Twice. My name is Chester, and I'm here with... Uh, CJ Ferg, how you doing? And we were talking about a little wrestling before we started with this and how something can just grow so bland, but have so much attention at the same time and a lot to live up to. Uh, there's a wrestler named Lars and he used his finisher about five times, even though it's, he's only been on TV for three weeks at the same exact camera angle and celebrate the same way as Colin mentioned earlier. And um, it can get stale. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are fine with the same thing for the whole duration that they're enjoying the product. Sometimes it's not okay and you have to change it up. Agreed. And that's what we're here to talk about. From Soft's departure from the Dark Souls of everything of being Dark Souls. Or at least the attempted yeah. departure of Dark Souls. But at the same time, this game that they came out with emulated and tried to do a lot of things that Dark Souls does, but it kind of falls short on what it tries to do because it tried so hard to be what they used to be, which yeah. is, again, very fitting with WWE. It's, as you said, they're trying to promote the brand and not so much make a great product, which I think FromSoft struggled with. Did you know this is the Dark Souls of Ninja Games? <laughs> so I'll say that again? <laughs> One more time, just one more time. It's a freaking script, and I even <laughs> don't even feel right saying that still. It's the Dark Souls of... God, it's all right. <laughs> so, like, it was, like, uber cool, like, Video Game Awards, like, a couple years ago, and they showed a trailer, mm -hmm. and we texted each other, oh, my gosh, there's a new game from FromSoft yeah. coming out, and it might be Dark and Bloodborne It too. looked like it, because it was all bloody, and it was at, like, this bone, and some, like, rope was twisting around Riddling. a thing, and you're like, I don't really know what... And then it said, Shadows Die Twice, and everyone's like, oh, two means the second one! So, yeah, some people were like, it's a Bloodborne 2. With, like, how this game ended up being is that it was revealed, what, in a few months after that? Mm -hmm. but yeah, they were revealed that it was going to be Sekiro, and it was going to be this... Ninja Shinobi game and they showed clips of him like grappling on a on a roof and like the the parrying and all that and so people were like oh my god this game is brand new and it was but then what did you see after that when you found out later who's backing this game oh Activision yeah Activision. I wasn't I was pretty disappointed when I heard it I was so scared that there was going to be some microtransactions, or the game was going to be rushed, or <laughs> something. Get this outfit in this cool suit when you pre-order Segura. Yeah, that's oh, why I said GameStop. Totally <laughs> you hear that voice in the back of your head, don't you? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> pre-order now. <laughs> but luckily, it has a big DLC to get one extra boss. <laughs> <laughs> It's $40. <laughs> get this four that you get at the end of the game actually early when you pre-order with us. Oh. But luckily, Activision decided to be a lot more hands-off with the development of the game, man. Or more so helping out with the, I think, the marketing more so and the yeah, advertisement. Well, and, like, advising on, like, some stuff that would probably make the game run a little smoother or get, mm. like, people... Because this is the thing, is off the bat, this game, I think, is, is accessibility-wise, yeah. is better than the Dark Souls games. Um, and I think Activision had a lot to do with that. They they made sure that they're like, hey, it's okay to have tutorials. It's okay as yeah. long as they're short and sweet. Oh it's gosh. okay to have tutorials. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And so I think stuff like that. They're like, hey, we need to make sure this game is going to appeal to a wider audience as opposed to the niche Dark Souls audience. The interesting part is that the game was supposed to be Tenchu at the start, which I'm not sure a lot of people know that FromSoft originally made Tenchu back in the day, and that was like one of the first known stealth games at the time. But as development went on, basically the developers of FromSoft and Activision were like, this game's gotta kinda be its own thing. 
Um, but at the same time, I think Miyazaki said in an interview that he did want to make this game, like he wanted to assure people who play Dark Souls games that this game was going to have some stuff of that. So where do you want to start with this? Let's start with the story. Okay. I want to start in the 18th century. More importantly, the Sengoku, the Sengoku period, Colin. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, yes, Hashidira, I try to take control through the means of war. Mm -hmm. An orphan child is found by a man named Owl, Ooh. Colin. Uh-huh. And let me tell you something, yeah. CJ. Uh -huh. This man rose, raised his child to be nothing more, nothing less than a great warrior. I feel like you're angry at me because you're he, saying my name. And, and he called audience, and he called the child wolf. And he raised him so <laughs> as naturally an owl will call his child wolf. <laughs> it's natural. Because you know Billy. Donovan <laughs> Wolf <laughs> So you are Wolf and you grow up to be a strong man and 20 years later mm -hmm. uh, Are you 40? Are you 20? You don't know. You have gray yeah, hair. It's gray hair. You're George Clooney. You're the George Clooney of the Ashina clan, correct? Pretty much, yeah. Wolf attempts to uh, save his master, which Owl has told him his master is the most important thing in his life, that you defend him yes. with with all your strength. You don't even know who his master is, but you find out that it's this this kid named uh, Kudo who uh, has a special power of immortality and he can bestow it upon people through like blood transfusion or maybe he mm. on them or something. The, the, the person that he confronts is the grandson of Ishin named Genichiro and Genichiro uh, plans to use this power called the Dragon's Heritage uh, in order to restore Sheena back to what it was and maybe make the people all immortal. I'm not really sure what his motives were. Um, but in the battle, Wolf loses his left arm uh, and then he wakes up to a sculptor who gives him a prosthetic and that prosthetic is a thing we saw in the trailer. Like, you gotta do a thing and so it's it's interesting. Um, oh, oh it's, that is just unprofessional. Yeah, that was a <laughs> Sekiro alarm. <laughs> um, I, got a, I got holy emblems. <laughs> <laughs> what does Eloy want? Oh. <laughs> I hope Eloy sees this, or I'm not. I'm, I'm not cutting that. And as you mentioned, settings are are gorgeous. Mm. There's a lot of different types of levels. Uh, there's a bunch oh of different goodness. types of enemies, which is again, you're gonna get that from From Software. They are great at giving you an area uh, and making it look completely brand new and still connect to the world around you. And, and then having completely different enemies that you encounter, so it throws you for a loop. You're never fighting, it's never. It's not like Mario where you fight a Goomba on level one and level 100 or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I would still get a little sweaty entering new areas because of the darkness or either because it's too pretty. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I need to stand on this rock and just do a little pan, 360 pan. I'll even put this like right here of the area where all the monks are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this is just nice. Sound design's great. Music's great, a um, lot of epic scores mm -hmm. and like these somber tones in certain moments and um, and there's like a bunch of great video game moments. There's there's a part with it, I mean spoilers, put that there. Uh, there's a giant freaking snake that just shows up. The best I, part of the game. It's terrifying. Best like the there's so many epic and terrifying moments in that game that it, it you have to you have to take a step back and appreciate what they were able to do with that. Um, and it shows that they had pacing in mind of yeah. not only going in your own path, because we both try to play through it blindly, me a little less because of, you'll hear later, but of we never really veered off where we were supposed to go mm -hmm. because you hit a stop of, I believe it was the three monkey fight where you have to go back and get an item so you can enter that fight. Yeah. And more or less, we experience the same thing, more. slightly at different ways, yeah. but as soon as someone said the word snake, we both stopped and were like, yeah, you got to the snake part? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this game is still extremely hard. If one, if one thing we can give FromSoft of keeping in your life, this game's hard. This game's hard. Colin, you know there are people that still have not gone past the, uh, then you go in the memory? And the fight Lady Butterfly, there are people still in that area. I'm not surprised. <laughs> that, that area is tough. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's I'm not, tough. Like, I'm done. It's cool. From Soft, I appreciate it. Enjoy my 60 bucks. If anybody out there who quit like 10% into the game, I do not blame you. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, we got to, okay, we're at the Dark Souls meme limit now. We can't do anymore. There's a lot to explore because of dedicated jump buttons and you have a jump off the wall button uh, and you also have a grappling hook. So they were able to make the worlds a lot bigger. They were, all, they were able to, uh, you know, throw off some landmarks and go, hey, what's that thing over there? I want to go to that thing. Oh, well, you can go to that thing. Like it's, and that's, I think that was a good thing. However, there were parts where you would get lost because there's certain areas like, once you're in an area and you're staying in that area, it's mm -hmm. very big and sometimes things can look uh, the same. It's not like you got completely lost, Yeah. but there were times where you're like, man, where am I going? You never really got lost, but then I always assumed there was more. Yeah. And then it would kind of end like the rooftops. So you go back to Storton to the castle to fight uh, Janishiro the first time. Mm -hmm. Kind of thought it would be longer. But is it longer because I was trying to get the items or because I was stubborn and just didn't advance when I had the chance? Yeah. Especially when your item usage is hard to gauge when you want to explore. That's true. Because you don't get to replenish your items and they only let you have three pellets, a certain amount of spirit emblems of how much you have it upgraded, mm -hmm. and a certain amount of uh, tonics? What does he heal with? The, Let's call it potions, whatever. Yeah, the gourds, the healing gourds. Healing gourds, healing there you gourds, go. yeah. It makes it, it makes me want to just not wimp out, but just go back to the idol because now I know what's there. So why risk it? Yeah, exactly. Why risk half my cash and also uh, my pellets because I went, I'm went trying to fight an assassin to pick up, oh, nothing useful yeah <laughs> that, that's a big problem of the game is that that there's a lot of items that that you use in maybe one to two situations and then that's it mm -hmm. and and then there's a lot of times where as you said the item you, you can't just replenish it on your own you have to find another idol to go do it and there's just a lot of stuff with that where it makes it it makes it awkward yeah um i guess to to use your items and to know what's going to work against what and like there's so we could take for example like um the snap pee, right? Mm. Is the snap pee is basically designed to use for uh, apparitions. It's supposed to be, or like uh, illusions. Yeah. So it's supposed to anything that's like a ghost and a basically. healthy snack. Yeah, yeah, that's very healthy. <laughs> um, basically, anything that's like a, if it's a ghost, you use this snap pee, and the snap pee just is used literally for maybe one fight if you do the lady butterfly fight, and then you can use it to cheese one of the bosses. Yeah. Either than that you're never using the item yeah. and it's it's just bizarre especially when previous games made it so pr basically every item had a had a universal use to it right like uh fire bombs fire bombs in dark souls is very there's not a time where that item is necessarily bad or useless it might not work as well later in the game yeah. but it still will do damage and it will still do the thing that you want it to do. And it feels like these items benefit speedrunners a lot more as we've been seeing a lot of uh, Sekiro runners like Distortion 2 just cut his time in half mm -hmm. just because of how much you can cheese the game with these items. Like Ash. Ash. Ash is the one. That's Ash. the one. Ash. Ash. Just Ash. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. This is Ash. That thing works on like every <laughs> boss. It's and that's the other part too. It's it's so unbat like and there's other things like you almost never use. There's some items you almost never use. Like sometimes you'll use the sugars, but they don't last very long. So then you yeah. you're basically incentivized to get I don't remember what the the things are. The, oh, where geez. you can use them wherever. The souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe the souls of the giants you can fight throughout the headless giants you can fight throughout the game. Your reward for killing them, mm -hmm. you get to use the sugars whenever you want. But they use your spirit emblems. There's a skill that increases the duration of the sugars, but I'm pretty sure they don't apply to the souls of the sugar. What? The items are not really used all that much, and then the prosthetics, which goes back to the spirit emblem thing, is the prosthetics are really only, most of them are really only useful when they're upgraded. And when they're upgraded, they use more spirit emblems, and the amount of spirit emblems you get is pretty small because it's not just one spirit emblem for your up. If you use a certain type of prosthetic tool or a combat move, you you might use up to six. You could yeah. use like like anywhere from like three to six on average. And that's not counting sneaking, also the those skills, the jutsus, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are six or seven, also, and. If you're really trying to get your money's worth, then upgrade your amount of spirit emblems you can hold. What's disrespectful 
is that you only allow me to upgrade it by one. Every time. I think the max I can get is 20 yeah, emblems. I think, something like that. Either 20 or 21, because nothing more than 25. I felt like his, I don't know, his wolf given, owl given abilities, whatever, from his papa, it already made him enough of a warrior. I felt like they felt like giving him too much would make him too strong. Yeah. And so they hit all that, like Colin said, on like the final tiers, the second to last tiers will allow the weapons. Mm -hmm. I am killing the same enemies over and over because I don't want to explore or get effed over because I want to do a cool dash that doesn't even work. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I upgraded my prayer beads to max. And you had yours, I think. I only had four, four, four necklaces. You still beat the game, still had the final ending. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of them. One of the final endings. One of the eight. And you still did fine. I still, you, I think you did just as well as I did with max health. Yeah. Which is interesting. Odd. Well, it feels like. <laughs> and that's kind of the problem. And it goes back to the prosthetics usefulness because just some of them aren't even useful at all. Yeah. Just, just some. And like I said, in, in the ones that aren't useful to begin with are only useful until they're basically fully upgraded. Yeah. And then those fully upgraded ones take so many spirit emblems where then you can only get X amount of use out of it. And especially if you're trying to use it for a boss, it's it, it doesn't feel useful because then, then you fall back onto what the game has wanted you to basically do the whole time, which is parry. Yeah. Parry, parry, or retreat, parry. Or retreat and... And Pairs use a, a tanto, the ceremony, ceremony of tanto to try to increase your emblems again. A lot of the things that they wanted you to do, and that also goes with the stealth too. There weren't a lot of times, like the game is supposed to be built more around stealth. And there's times where you just don't use it ever. And there's only one area in the game where they like center the whole level around stealth. There's just a lot of stuff in this game where they're like, we're going to put this thing here and you can use it if you want. Mm. But really want you to do this thing overall the game's like very fluid it's yeah. very smooth the game is it's it is responsive to play there's nothing wrong it's not like clunky yeah. like past souls game like especially dark souls one is a very clunky game yeah um and, and there's really cool like animations when you get a death blow which is kind of what it's centered around is basically parrying get the getting their stamina down or their posture down <laughs> and then uh and then killing them right away with like a, basically a death blow um and it's like really cool. It's accompanied with like really cool animations. Um, and when it's really good, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's like, it can feel like you're in a legitimate sword fight. It can really add a lot to what the fight's going on. And then there's other times where- it Feels like I'm just mashing the L1 button. Or you're parrying constantly until they screw up. So yeah. like for an example, for like the parrying one is the whatever giraffe thing. Oh, the centipede yeah. dress. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it, I had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what he, he's like this, like this cave dwelling, yeah, like screwed up human looking thing. Yeah. But he's got like Wolverine claws and his whole gimmick, his entire gimmick is two moves. Swipe at you constantly until I get tired or I do one sweep attack that you have to jump over. Either than that's all he does. So literally that whole boss is parry, 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 jump, parry, 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 hit him, hit him, hit him, parry, then repeat, rinse and repeat. And that's, and then you beat him. And it's like, that's not, that's not clever. Yeah. That's just repet like repetitive and annoying. And it kind of just teaches you a bad habit because I sure as hell started doing that for the rest of the game. I was like, I could have just mashed L1. There's no timing? No, not, well, there is a little bit, but it's pretty, it's pretty, it's it, it's pretty generous. It's forgiving. Yeah. Part of and also part of these bosses is that the way because of the the way the game is set up, there is a lack of variety with that because it always falls back on parrying. Plus the items being almost only like only useful two or three times, and then the um, the spirit emblems not being really all there. It makes you parry, and the problem with that is is that the only item or the only weapon and the only outfit you get in the whole game is the one you start off with which is a which is one samurai sword and a and a piss yellow robe and i it's what it is and it's given to him by his father i don't care his <laughs> father peed on it apparently um and and that's and that's a problem because there's a lot of enemies that you encounter that have spears and halberds and hammers and like the first boss of the game the first major boss of the game uh this dude who rides a horse uh has like a spear thing that has a rope attached to it so he can swing it around yeah and there's all these it's like and then there's the drafting that has claws and there's 
Like, there's all these weapons that people have that you can never, ever, ever use. Nope. So then, again, it always falls back. Okay, here's this boss. Okay, I have to parry it. Oh, here's this cool boss. I have yeah, to parry, parry it. Here's this boss. I have to parry it. It's, <laughs> it's like, and it's like that's, that's, that's all well and fine sometimes. If you but Google, I'm having trouble on this boss. Parry. Are you parrying right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just because it's, it just fighting feels monotonous. Mm -hmm. It just feels like you can't do the thing that you want to do that the the and that's the problem with everything is that the the developers felt like they really wanted to hone in on this posture system yeah but they didn't expand it and make it even more interesting it is cool on the surface but once you get through a certain part of the game you realize you're just doing the same thing over and over again in different environments and that's i think that's a problem you can res once maybe twice depending on if you kill like a certain enemy yeah um and you can use it as like an advantageous tool for like stealth you can die and then the guys walk away and then you can sneak up on them and backstab them so mm. that's cool however there's like this this story element they try to put into it which is like oh, there's dragon's rot so you basically have this dragon's heritage and the dragon's rot if in, uh, infects people who you come into contact with so basically if you use the res thing too much these people will start getting sick Here's the kicker. None of them die. There's no stakes. There's no stakes with this thing. It's, say the word sick again. Sick. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They, they get sick. But all they're doing is coughing up blood and they can't say things. But then it, it affects uh, people who sell you things and certain NPCs. And that, but it doesn't do anything. I didn't see anything. Maybe I, didn't, I, I got them sick too. I made sure they were trying to die. No one like really got sick. No. Was, uh, uh, you got three thousand though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, like there's no, there's no actual stakes to yeah. you dying and then resing a ton. It just there's mm -hmm. none. No one dies. There's no consequence for it. So I just, you feel, I, I just don't know why they put it in the game. You feel a little bad. Yeah, I, I appreciate. That's it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some lore to it in like the dragon rod, the power of resurrection but the cost of having this power as well maybe that's part of the accessibility maybe <laughs> I, I wouldn't i honestly i wouldn't be surprised if from software was like we're gonna make them die and activision was like wait 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 wait, wait. Hold yeah on. Hold, like, on, hold, on, hold like, on relax yeah don't do that because then people will get mad and <laughs> yeah. they'll be like why am i bad at the game and they'll be like because mm -hmm. you're bad at the game yeah but whatever it's like, it's it, a small thing but it's like why put it there there's a world built the characters are there I just didn't, they try to make us care about them, I think with the dragon rot. Yeah. But ultimately just nothing. Can I touch on New Game Plus a little bit also? Sure, go for it. I don't appreciate the fact that I felt like I was fully playing the full potential of the game until New Game Plus with some of the stuff unlocked. As we kind of were saying before, I think, I think our expectations with this game were probably a lot higher than what this game ended up being. Yeah, um, I'll blame myself for that too. FromSoft's like recent track record kind of led us to believe that this was going to be just fine and the game is not bad by the way we want to preface it we like this game but as much as we're saying all this stuff the reason we're saying it is because we truly like this game yeah. but there's a lot of problems and it feels like this game was supposed to be one sort of coherent thing and it ended up being very separate yeah. in a lot of different areas um and it felt like it was supposed to be a coming out party for a new genre for themselves, mm -hmm. but they either were not scared, but it was an experimental phase. And if they're gonna make a second game, a lot of this will be fixed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. I, I I wonder I, I wonder truly if they know what people did not like about because this game was get this is the thing is i think we're one of the few people who probably wouldn't give this game a 10 or a 9 yeah oh, and, no, no. and i like <laughs> and so i wonder if they're gonna they're gonna know what stuff needs to be improved i hope they do because i mean dark souls was great and that got great reviews and then they somehow made bloodborne so it's like yeah I, I don't know we'll see yeah we'll see as we were kind of saying at the top it feels like from software instead of just trying to make a game on its own, mm. was really hell-bent on making a game that Dark Souls people were going to pick up yeah. and not just a good game for its own merit. Um, it tried to combine Tenchu and Dark yeah. Souls, basically. It's still holding on to the past. Like, let's just do something new. Yeah. Uh, I think FromSoft really needs to stop being 
Dark Souls the company. Yeah. And they need to make the game that they want to make, not what Dark Souls fans want. Yeah. Because if that was the case, then Naughty Dog would be on like Crash Bandicoot 47 at this point. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> that's why they went away. That's why they went and did The Last of Us, yeah. right? They wanted to expand their horizons and do something completely out of the box. And that's why the makers of Killzone made Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, that, that's a great, it's another one. Like, they didn't want to keep making, because they've made, what, three kill zones? Four yeah. kill zones, whatever it was? It's, it's, it can't be fulfilling, like, it can't be fulfilling at a certain point. Anymore. No, I, when you're making the same garbage every, not garbage. <laughs> Sorry, I was harsh. Uh, the personally of themselves making the same art over yeah, and over again. You get sick of it. You yeah. get sick of doing the same. Yeah, and it's like, okay, this is what works, sure. But, like, you need to be able to take risks. So I have hope. Whatever they do next will be just cut the ties. Yeah. Let's go to outer space, baby. Especially since Miyazaki has said for a long time that he's wanted to get away from the Dark Souls series. Yeah. He doesn't want to keep making Dark Souls games his whole life. But it's weird that if this, if this was his first foray into I want to get away from Dark Souls, almost. Yeah. Almost. almost. It's just, but, but it's, I don't know. Take the risk, baby. Take the risk. Would you... Uh... Buy this game. Would you buy it full price or wait for it to go on discount before I'd you tell wait. a friend to buy it? I'd wait. Yeah. We we both have said several times that we would not buy this game for sixty dollars, but we no. would definitely buy it for like forty. 40 yeah. Forty, 40 dollars. It's Easy. it's definitely worth your time. It is it is a worthy playthrough. Mm -hmm. However, there's just stuff and again, just remember this is coming from two people that have played Dark Souls one, two, three, and Bloodborne, and there's just a lot there that we see and we don't see and mm. so th that's where a lot of this is coming from yeah like i'm shit, you might well put this in the beginning thousand hours of dark souls probably combined yeah thousand hours of dark souls to, uh you have uh, a thousand hours of blood, 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 blood. blood. <laughs> <laughs> like we I, I hate to be like oh we deserve to talk about it. we can talk about You're this. damn right we can talk about we it we can talk about what we notice is different and what we like and what we don't like so if you agree with us or don't agree, it's just an opinion. Leave yours below. Leave it up top. Leave it in our DMs. <laughs>